To say that the community was split by a single post coming from principal designer Scott Mercer just recently would be an understatement. I don't think I've ever seen such a clean split in the middle when it comes to what the comment section seems to think and that not just under my own video. Naturally I'm talking about the upcoming season 8 changes, huge ones at that so if you want to educate yourself on that I'll be popping that video into the top right corner. But what better way of maximizing clickbait is that than covering the same topic twice in a row and that's what I'm here for rehatching what I talked about two days ago. Jokes aside, given that the last video was more of an announcement of hey this is gonna be a thing early next year, today I would like to talk about the nitty gritty of it. Especially in relation to the comments surrounding this announcement because it seems like people really missed the point and I can't even blame them. In the face of the massive announcement that is the removal of performance adjustments for players and diamond and above, it is easy to kinda just forget about everything else they mentioned, but these things matter. First off, the devs did not forget about all of you below diamond. First and foremost the post talks about adjustments to the matchmaker to increase match quality. That includes tightening up the SR difference between the highest and lowest rated player in each game. What that means is that you should be seeing less variance in rating among the participants you play with and against. So hopefully things like seeing gold players and platinum matches and diamond players in grandmaster matches should be a thing of the past. Or at least making sure that in the case of lower rated players it would only be high golds together with low platinum in which case the difference in actual skill is more negligible than going from borderline diamond to just barely holding onto gold. So I really want to make sure you guys are aware of that change because it is pretty big if the restrictions are as tight as they make us hope. We can expect longer queue times as a result but I think the majority of truly invested competitive players of any elo would agree that better quality matches are worth the wait. But I know that the big point of contention is the fact that they are removing performance adjustments only for higher rated players. Argument being that this only affects about 10% of the player base making it rather worthless to the majority of competitive players. While it is accurate that, according to Blizzard themselves, about 13% of the entire player base was holding a rank above 3000, that was back in season 3. And websites like Master Overwatch cite 3000 to 3050 as the 63rd percentile or top 37%. So that gives you a bit of perspective on how many people this actually affects. But that is not my point anyway. Instead I want to try and convince you of performance based adjustments working in your favor below diamond rather than against you. And we'll get into how SR distribution is going to behave in the first place once this patch hits live. Do note however that as much as I would love to state all these things with certainty, at the end of the day it's just a theory. A game the Actually I'm pretty sure they got this face trademark so I'd rather not mess around with it. This entire theory is going to hinge on a single yet believable assumption and that will be the proposed fact that performance metrics above diamond are fairly similar. Suggesting that the difference between diamond Diamond and Grandmaster players is not how much damage and healing they do, but rather how they apply their skills. The amount of statistics that are being farmed is not rising exponentially as the rating increases. Now my problem with this is that I can't find the bloody source anymore, which is why in the past I referred to it as certain outlets have suggested. I think it was a video Force made a while ago and the source he cited was Omnic Meta, but I can't find it to save my life. And since, unlike game theory, I do not have a team of theorists helping me research and animate animator that actually makes this thing remotely entertaining to watch, as well as being limited to a day's worth of labor rather than a week, we'll have to just kinda work with what we got here. So what about we just toss ourselves in there? Assuming that what we proposed about statistics above diamond is accurate, we already got a very solid hint that could explain why Blizzard decided to not make this change ladder wide. If players are already more difficult to distinguish based on their raw baseline statistics, then the things that would separate them are likely not quite as statistically driven anyway. If we also consider that diamond is a rank that is a decent bit above the average of about 2350, I think it is fair to assume that these players usually have a fundamental understanding of the game that will clearly separate them from their peers in lower ratings. Ranks below diamond allow players to make a more significant impact on the outcome of a match by simply improving their own gameplay. Players who are stuck this low on the ladder are lacking a fundamental understanding for the game's mechanics and or painfully underperform from a mechanical perspective. That does allow somebody who improves in a significant fashion to distinguish themselves more easily from their peers in the same rating. In our current system that means that lower rated players are less at the mercy of their entire team working together in a well coordinated fashion, something that is more usually the deciding factor in higher rated games. Even if you lose a lot as a silver ranked player, if you are significantly better than the others around your rating, the personal performance adjustment allows you to escape that rating.
fighting with relative ease. If you look at how Overwatch works as a competitive game, then you will quickly learn that coordination is a big factor. However, expecting players of such low ratings to properly communicate is a bit of a stretch, given that they are very likely yet to learn how the game works, period. Now, you can take this as an insult if you want, but fact of the matter is that nobody is stuck below Platinum because of their teammates. Absolutely nobody. If you can't get out of a rating that is this low, then you're doing something fundamentally wrong. What I do agree with, however, is that every player, no matter how high or low on the ladder, should be able to have an enjoyable experience on ladder. And this is something the developers are in the responsibility to fix by continuously removing players who are harmful to the core competitive experience of this game mode. But there is no patch in the world that will take somebody who lacks basic understanding and mechanical skill and somehow magically make them not suck at the game anymore. It's literally a matter of getting good. Improve yourself and find out what you're doing wrong. And once you do, having your own performance allow you to more quickly rank up is going to be a godsend, trust me. So if we were to agree that Diamond is right about the breaking point on ladder where your own gameplay can no longer make enough of an impact to win a match and coordination becomes more important, then it makes a whole lot of sense that performance based adjustments are being removed from there on out. This is where players have to start learning how to function as a unit rather than functioning as individual players and that is something that, trust me, even a lot of higher rated players are yet to learn. Where previously, proving to the game that you have the mechanical skill necessary to perform in a higher rating is what it comes down to, it is now important to throw away the idea of min-maxing and instead doing everything in their power to plain and simply win the match. Now if you think that this video was not speculative enough thus far, then boy you're in for a treat because this is where the good stuff begins. If the performance based adjustment is removed above diamond, who decides how much SR I'm gonna get then? Now in my initial video, this is a question I asked myself as well. I proposed that they would either cave into a set amount for every match or keep their SR distribution as is right now, but minus the performance based adjustment. And according to people who sound way smarter than me in the comment section, the latter seems to be accurate. Standard ELO slash true skill systems are all mathematically based on the underdog slash favorite modifier, comparing the starting SR of each team or player. This is how the math works so it won't be a plus minus of a flat 25, it'll be a number based on relative SRs but it will be static. It is worked out as the match starts and does not change based on the events within the match itself. So contrary to popular belief, standard true skill systems would not have a set amount of points that they give or take away for any match. The base amount you can earn or lose is calculated before the match even starts based on how likely you are to win and the game makes that assumption by comparing MMR values. Essentially you have a say in that decision by showing the game that its assumption was not entirely accurate. Meaning, if you perform above expectation, you'd earn more points, and the opposite will be the case if you underperform. That's the way the current ladder works and will continue to work below diamonds starting early next year. What the dev team hopes to achieve with this change is encouraging players to actually play the game as it was intended to be. They are actively trying to root out people who are harmful to the core competitive experience by handing out bans based on multitudes of reports. Assisting that is going to be the future of season 8 that then, above diamond, will be ruled by the notion of doing anything to win rather than trying to game the SR system. But wait, we sidetracked a bit here. Who decides how much SR I'm gonna get then? Just to make sure I get the point across, it is likely going to work the exact same way it's working now, but minus the performance adjustment. That means you can no longer affect the decision the game makes at the start of the match based on who it thinks is the underdog and who is likely to be the victor. So the game will be taking a look at your MMR and your SR, see how far your SR is away from your true skill, aka your MMR, and it will use this to compare to the others you play with and against. Your gameplay will affect your MMR in the same fashion I assume. But wait, what's the point then? Does it mean that one tricking is still the best way of getting to my highest possible rank? If I'm entirely honest, when I read deeply into this, I do not understand how this is supposed to fix anything. As our distribution still hinges on the same things it did before, but it will no longer accelerate players towards a higher or lower rating for consecutively performing really well or really poorly. That's all the performance adjustment did, accelerate you in either direction of doing well or not doing so well. Unless they put a bigger emphasis on a player's ability to plan 
didn't simply win matches, I do not see how this possibly fixes a thing. I mean, I can see a world where a player's MMR gets increased for making key swaths that help them win on a regular basis despite not having the greatest statistics on those heroes. But when it comes down to everybody's number one complaint of one tricks, this really doesn't change anything as far as I can tell. However, it is worth noting that I am not a developer and neither am I particularly smart when it comes to game development. I'm just some guy on the internet who talks about things he finds interesting, so I hope to god that there is something I'm missing. With that said, I greatly appreciated all the individuals that joined the discussion under my last video and took time out of their day to explain to me and others how basic ELO systems work for example. Reading comments like that is always very enlightening, so if there's anything I missed in today's video that makes it hard for me to connect two dots, please let me know down in the comment section below. I'm currently not sure if the shift away from performance based SR adjustments is supposed to change the mindset of players more than the actual system, or if this is changing something I've not considered, so getting more opinions would definitely be cool. Regardless, I'm convinced that we are going to see a massive shift coming in Season 8. Improved matchmaking for players of all ratings is an absolutely massive deal and finally has us moved towards a future where competitive play has the competition as its focus rather than the convenience of everyone, even those who don't actually care to compete at all. It is a first step that I hope has many more followings so one day we can finally enjoy rank for what it is supposed to offer, a genuinely competitive environment. But this is me done for the day so thank you everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more and I hope to see you all next time.